exactly. But, uh, you know, also don't get back to being complacent either because even though we had a nice move off the today's lows and maybe next week we get a bounce at the Fed or central banks around the globe make that coordinated movement, there's still plenty of things we need to watch out for. And that's num first and foremost the spread of coronavirus, especially here in the U.S. That's going to unnerve investors. Watch the levels of the VIX, see where we go from there on that. The 10-year, obviously, that's a huge uh, data point that we need to keep our eye on. We want to see some stabilization there because I don't think you can really get stabilization in this market until you have stabilization in the bond market. So we're now about 13 percent off the record highs. Gabriella, the, the magnitude of, of the declines, how does it stack up for you given some of the uncertainty and the risks and the potential economic pain that we're facing as a result of this coronavirus? Yeah, so it's been absolutely a U.S.-led sell-off this week. And to me, that says more about how stretched U.S. valuations were relative to the rest of the world. U.S. markets hadn't really uh, corrected uh, despite the emergence of the COVID-19 uh, virus. Um, and we had had already stretch valuations coming into this year. So to me, it says much more about the need for multiples to come down to reflect a greater uncertainty around the impact of COVID-19 on earnings, uh, as well as the economy, of course. But it says more about just how stretch valuations were, really. John, what are you looking out for over the weekend, whether it's data or announcements that, that could give you confidence to go back in a, in a meaningful way into equity markets? I think we saw a good sign, like Mike said, on the close, right? The VIX came down. We saw money move into Carnival uh, Cruises, which was a stock that was, you know, the market was down 15 percent. Some airlines and cruise lines were down over 50 percent because of this virus. So the market's a discounting mechanism. It really discounted a lot of bad news. We have China PMI this weekend. Hopefully, Lagarde, right? I know she's a friend of yours. CB, I don't know. I hope, you're, I hope you're waiting for her to do something. I, no, no, not the that financial you, times not, yesterday. Yeah, I know. I, was, I saw that. That's but, not a shock. And didn't seem willing to do something. Yeah. Not that they have to do something, but the market, you know, words matter, right? Even for central banks. And I think Powell coming out this, today and saying what he said was important, especially when all the other Fed speakers today were not saying that. I think it's important that the, that the Fed and other central banks don't make it worse, that they look like they're on top of it. But when it comes to actual comfort from the problem that's ailing, I mean, don't you need to hear from public health officials? Don't we need to see what's happening in places like Korea or Italy where we can tell what's happening with the spread, how much, what the mortality rate is, how well, much we consumer saw behavior in, has changed, that I think, sort of thing. Yeah, China things leveled off. Singapore, I think things have really... It's hard to get a clear picture, It's hard, though, it's hard to get a... Yeah, well, exactly. But Singapore, things have gotten better. Europe, the cases are still lower. I mean, the market's telling you that it already discounted things getting worse. Now, like you said, if there's an antidote, something coming out of an Israeli drug company, something that they're fast-tracking everything at the FDA to have some, whether it's a, a, a vaccine or an antidote, those things are positives, and it's going to happen sooner rather than later, I think. Now, it's been a crazy week, of course, on Wall Street.